Hello and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled PowerShell.exe is not PowerShell. My name is Tim Warner. I'm a trainer at Pluralsight and a PowerShell.org video contributor. What we're doing in this particular video series is taking item by item the entries in the ebook, The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas. I've put a bit.ly shorty link down at the bottom of this slide for you to quickly find it. The DevOps Collective hosts this book for free at Gitbooks and even allows community contributions. We're concerned with entry four, PowerShell XE isn't PowerShell. Let's proceed. It's all too easy for PowerShell beginners, and heck, even those who have used the shell for a number of months or years, to make the mistaken assumption that the PowerShell console host that you and I are accustomed to using, as you see here, is the PowerShell engine. You need to understand that there's a fundamental difference between the PowerShell engine and the host application. The host application, of which the console is just one of many, provides a sort of wrapper or a framework around the underlying PowerShell engine. As you know, the PowerShell engine is part of a downloadable component called the Windows Management Framework, or WMF. Each major Windows version, either client or server OS, normally gets the latest and greatest RTM or release to manufacturing version of the WMF. And at the Microsoft Download Center, I'm just picking on WMF4 in this example, you'll notice that oftentimes, but not always, you'll receive a revamped version of the PowerShell Integrated Scripting Environment, or ISE host. The underlying DLLs and engine that makes up PowerShell is, I'm going to repeat it one more time, completely separate from the host application. Now, how can we demonstrate that? Well, there's a few different ways. As you see here, I have an instance of the console host open. Let me press Enter and CLS to clear the screen. I did that, by the way, by right-clicking my PowerShell icon in the taskbar and selecting Run as Administrator from the jump list. You'll also see that off to the side here, I have an instance of the ISE, I can do that from the same jump list, selecting Run ISE as Administrator. Now, as it happens, in each of your host applications, you have a separate automatic variable called dollar $host. And if you run dollar $host, it'll give you a run of the specific name of the host application, the PowerShell engine version that's being targeted, and some various other metadata. In the ISE, it's the same thing. Let me CLS to clear my console and do a dollar $host here, and you're going to see See that we have Windows PowerShell ISE host this time. Now this machine that I'm on happens to be an Active Directory domain controller. So I can do a search for Active Directory Administrative Center. And unfortunately, a GUI tool like this does not allow you to get a prompt under the hood. But if you've ever used ADAC, you know that we have this Windows PowerShell history pane down at the bottom, and any action that we perform is going to be echoed down below. For instance, if I want to create a new user account, as soon as I submit the form, you'll notice that all of the relevant underlying PowerShell commandlets that are being run take place. If you've used the on-premises version of Microsoft Exchange, it's the same thing. The Exchange graphical tools are simply PowerShell host applications that have the PowerShell engine running under the hood. And in the case of Exchange, that Exchange command console is also going to load the appropriate snap-ins and modules for you. I have a sample script that I've created called pshosts.ps1 that you can download. It's a little bit scattershot. I have in line two a run of set execution policy just to temporarily relax the execution policy on this machine. I'm just doing it in the scope of this ISE process, and that'll allow us to run additional commands. By the way, you can look at the members of the dollar $host automatic variable simply by running a pipe into the get member commandlet. Let's take a look and see what it comes back as. You see that we have some semi-interesting properties. Specifically, I want you to look at UI. One thing that some scripters do on their administrative workstation is that they programmatically customize their host's console. Now, there are separate profiles available for each host, as a matter of fact. So the profile script that you may create for the ISE is going to be a completely different initialization script than what you'd find, for instance, in the traditional command line PowerShell host. But this bit of script here just shows you that you can, for instance, create a variable that tags into the host application, into that UI property that I just showed you down below, 
And then there's a sub property called raw UI that actually unlocks a lot of really cool customizations. For instance, we can do actually, I'll just show you with autocomplete. We can use dot notation to get to those properties and set them. So for instance, we can do a foreground color equals black, a background color equals white. In the ISC, you can see that it's obeyed my commands. I've never actually made these kind of console changes to the ISC. They're much more dramatic, frankly, when you you do it in the console host proper over here. Nonetheless, I just want you again to understand that difference between the host and the PowerShell engine. Let's finish this demo by opening up a really nice piece of freeware. You're probably familiar with Process Explorer, one of the old sysinternals tools. You can point your browser to live.sysinternals.com to get direct downloads, or frankly, with PowerShell, you can just simply use package management. But anyway, let me refresh the view here to make sure it's current. And you'll notice that in addition to the PowerShell console host, in the ISE host. I also just for grins brought up an instance of cmd.exe, the traditional OS shell that's been a part of Windows for a long, long time. Now, if we come down to the bottom of my process list, you see something interesting. We have the PowerShell.exe process, and if we hover over it in Process Explorer, it can tell us the path to the executable. And then we see two child processes. We see that the PowerShell ISE.exe is actually a child of the PowerShell.exe console. And also we have conhost.exe as a subprocess of PowerShell.exe. What the heck is going on? Especially if we come down further in the process list and we see that command.exe has another instance of conhost.exe as a child process. What in the world? Well, if we right click one of these, I'm going to right click PowerShell.exe and go to its properties. We can go over to .NET assemblies and just notice that in the DLL list that comprises this PowerShell exe, we see a call to microsoft.powershell.console host. Aha! If we do the same thing for PowerShell ISE, go over to .NET Assemblies, we see that the DLL Microsoft.PowerShell.Graphical host is called in here. So even though the metadata, the description would lead you to believe that PowerShell.exe is Windows PowerShell, we know that it's simply a host application called console host and that ISE is a graphical host. Believe it or not, you can actually author your own PowerShell host environments if you want to. Finally, to wrap things up, if you're wondering about the relationship between PowerShell Exe and Conhost, the Windows PowerShell team owns the ISE application, but they have to share the console with the Windows team. So you're going to find that Conhost is actually the environment that surrounds both command.exe and the PowerShell.exe console. That's easy to figure out, for instance, because if you open the command menu of either a CMD session or a PowerShell.exe session, you'll find the same basic properties and metadata in both, just like you're seeing here in this quick demonstration. Thanks very much for your participation today. You can download the PowerShell script that I used in the demonstration from my own website. It's timwarnertech.com forward slash pshosts.zip. For related videos, go to the PowerShell.org YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell.org. The community site is at PowerShell.org. If you want to reach out to me for any reason, I am at timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. You can also locate me at LinkedIn, and my Twitter handle is techtrainertim.